Okay, so um, how to be amazing. My <coughs> name is Jamie Claret. I run a company called the Amazing Support Company. All right. Um, what do we do? We do network support, server support, desktop support, that kind of thing. We do it for small to medium sized businesses. So we deal with um, anyone from two user sites up to 100 user sites. I've got a team of people that work for me, and it's a business that I started about 10 years ago. First five years was me running around with a screwdriver, fixing computers, you know, kind, of, kind of trying to build up my business, and then about five years ago, kind of really pushed it forward, and there's about nine of us now in the company. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so well, I thought we could talk to you, because basically there's a lot of bad news out there at the moment. Are any of you, just so I can get, I know I spoke to you guys, who's in kind of first year, second year, who's, whereabouts, we just go around the room, what, whereabouts are you in your course, and what are you doing? Third year, we'll be the Okay, third year. So you're you're going out to the big wide yeah. world very, very soon. Okay, thank you. Competing at work second year. Second year, okay. Yeah, I'll be first second year. Second year. Second year. Yeah. Computer communication training. Second year. Second year. Okay, I know you're very clever. You're the master of the man. So <laughs> <laughs> you are know that you're you're, you're in your first year, and you your third year. Okay, so how does everyone feel about the kind of the economy and the news and what they're reading? Are, are you worried at all? No? Yeah? No? <laughs> Maybe I'm talking to the wrong group here. Maybe you're all going to go and get jobs straight away. <laughs> okay. I, I think it's very important. Like, I'm sure the people who graduated last year mm -hmm. still don't have jobs. Yeah, the absolutely. people who graduated the year before them still don't have jobs. Yeah. And you wonder, you graduate, then where do you go to? Because yeah. first of all, you think of going into the master's the year immediately after. Yeah. But again, is the issue that the government is raising fees. Mm -hmm. So coming back, it will be difficult to like get the amount of money they require in a few, in a short while and come back to your master's and then go there and think you more. Yeah, yeah. But even with their master's, unless you teach in a university, yeah. which at times you hear they're undercutting people, yeah. it's still a challenge to whether if you go do your master's, you'll get the job, mm -hmm. and then we need to be of any help. There's no guarantee. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And, and when you're when you're thinking, especially you in the in the final years, how are you thinking about going to get a job? How are you have you started doing anything? Have you started looking around? I know obviously you're when you graduate, it'll be kind of yeah. middle of kind of June time, isn't it? May June. I'm a second year student, so I'm just thinking to get some replacement. Okay. So basically, I'm applied for IBM and other companies like Windows or something else. Okay. But still, like I have to wait. I have to apply. Still wait. So I'm doing SLAs, I'm a student rep. Okay. So I've still got some experience at least to go show off. Um, I done like in my last vacation, I done some work for Cisco as well. Okay. Months. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I still got some experience to show that. Okay, I'm doing something. Okay. So well, maybe it's someone it's is going to get attached. Uh, well, that, that's one of the things we'll talk about. Yeah. Is, is so at least we need some like I, I need some experience to show it to any company so that they they can just take it to me and they're like, okay, this guy can do this because he has experience. Yeah. That's what they want. Um, that's what I'm looking for. No, no, it's, it's new experience. We, we obviously we, we employ people you know all the time and we're interviewing people a lot of the time. And one of the biggest problems that we have is that you have graduates, and there's no disrespect to graduates, I was one once, um, but they come into the interview and they say, Right, I've done a computer science degree, I want thirty grand and I want to be an IT manager. And like, oh, a second, you haven't you, you, you've done nothing, you know, you've got no experience and anything like that. And actually I haven't put it up, up on the thing, and uh, I'm not sure if it was on the thing, but a lot of what you learn here, it technically you need to know to do, what, to do your job. But what we find as an employer is, technically we can teach you what you need to know, because what you learn here is going to be subtly different to what we do in, in the day-to-day -day work. But what we can't teach, and what is probably most valuable to you, is your personality, and your, your, the way you talk to people, the way you interact with people, and that, that's kind of why we call ourselves the amazing support company, because there's a lot of companies out there you really like a hello, help desk, you know, that kind of attitude. And we're not like that. We're friendly, helpful, and we're all about that. So I, it was just a few examples. Obviously, you get all these words, double dip, recession, unemployment, you, you know, the bloody world's falling apart. But there's, that's, that's one way of looking at it. Um, I think if you're going to go far and you're going to do well, you've got, to, you've got to be optimistic about things. And, you know, you can. It's very easy to get into a doom and gloom mentality. And the other way to look at it is that there's massive opportunity. Now, this is a bit of a wordy thing. I'll read it to you. Has anyone heard of Seth Godin at all? Mm. Okay, he's, uh, he's like a marketing guru, and he writes these blogs and, and talks about things. Yeah, but it doesn't come in, so shall I let him in? This is, a, this is something that he wrote actually about 10 years ago. So this is a quote from him 10 years ago, and he, he kind of rehashed it in a recent blog. He says, here's a question that you should clip out and take to your bathroom mirror. It might save you some angst 15 years from now. He said, the question is, 
What did you do back when interest rates were at their lowest, which they are now, um, less than 50 years? Crime was close to zero. We're not quite there, but obviously crime's low. Um, great employees are looking for good jobs. All you guys are qualified, and you're, you, you know, you're eager to learn. Um, computers, I mean, computers and the internet, and you can do anything now. You can literally do anything now. And there was almost no competition for good news about great ideas. And what he said is many people will have, the answer, is have, will have to answer this question by saying, I spent my time waiting, whining, and moaning. And that's basically the gist of this quote. And that's, what I want you to get from that is that there is a lot of bad news out there, and it is all very negative, but uh, the opportunities are amazing. I'm reading at the moment, you know, Steve Jobs. I presume most of you have heard of Steve Jobs and, and Apple. And I'm reading this biography at the moment, and you know, he saw an opportunity, the beginning of computers, and, and he obviously became one of the richest people in the world because of it. And now, there's Facebook and Google and all these different things, and there's so much opportunity, and all you need is a computer and an internet connection. So it's, it's pretty inspiring kind of times in which to, uh, which to do things. Okay, that was one of the things. I mean, really to kind of, why am I here today? Really to kind of give you a bit of motivation about looking for jobs and what's going on in the market, but also how to set yourselves apart from the hundreds and thousands, if not tens of thousands of students that are, uh, that are applying for jobs at the moment, you know, who are all in technology, everyone wants to be in technology now. So, what do people think when I say by amazing? What, uh, what, what, come, what springs to mind if, if I say I'm the amazing support company? And what do you think, what, do you think, what image do you get in your mind of the people that work for me? Or the, uh... <laughs> Pete knows them, so uh... <laughs> you have to tell you whether you're right or not. <laughs> But uh, oh, man, let's try it a different way. Let's think about, have you been anywhere recently? Have you, have you um, been to a shop or been on a train? or there? Have you experienced what you would consider to be amazing customer service or something incredible? Yeah? Do you want to give us a, an example of, of where, you've, where, where something like that's... Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to, um, I, was, I think it was a trip I was making. It was um, a train trip to Coventry. Okay. And... Um, I was walking past a stand where she was selling some stuff, uh -huh. and my phone. I left my phone. I was using my phone, and I forgot it on the stand. Okay. And I'd come off the train. Just only to realize I was with my phone, and then I called the phone, and she picked it, telling me, oh, "Okay, she will be back to that stop at about." She gave me a time, mm -hmm. and if I will, if I will, if I care for it, I'll stay at the stop and come off the train. Like the train is going back to yeah, London, yeah. Yeah. and she will still be there. Like she's gonna keep it for me, and, and that was what she did. And I, I stayed there for I think it was it was kind of long though. It was about four hours before they came back. Wow. But I just waited there because I had my contacts and I needed it desperately. Yeah. And, and she gave it to me, and I was like, oh really? It was a very expensive phone. I just got it like two days ago. And how many people have you told people about that? No, no, you haven't told me. Yeah. Told okay. This <laughs> I was. I mean, it was what I was gonna say is, on the way in today, Pete and I were, were just trying to get a parking space to come up here today. And that was a great, so that's a great example of a mate, kind of someone doing something, going beyond the call of duty, going way beyond. And um, we came up here today, and I don't know, obviously, the guys that work on the barriers at the car park, and we're kind of like, we come up and we say, hi, I'm here to do a, a little bit of a talk, but your name's not here. <laughs> okay, well, I've been told that it is, well, I'm sorry. You know, and that's it, and you just get up against this, 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 this barrier of, uh, about people. And the same thing yesterday, I was on the train going into London, and um, I swipe my Oyster card, and it comes up with an error on the thing. And I say to the guy, the guard, you know, he's got all this stuff on, and I say to him, uh, um, what, what does this mean? Why is it not working? And he goes, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, this is, and, and the thing is, the thing is, unfortunately, especially in England, that is 90% of what you're dealing with all the time. So it's when someone does something way beyond it, you think, wow, really, that's, that's, a, that's, a great that's a great service. So what I'm talking about is how... If you think like that, and you you can kind of live your life like that, and, and work go go to work like that when you're looking for jobs and when you're working, if you can do that, it, you'll set yourself way above everyone else. And one of the key things is is you'll get to, you'll get talked about. So one of the examples I've got is um, it, there's, there's I've got a number of people that work for me, and there's one in particular. Well, there's two in particular actually, but, but both of them who they they go above and beyond. Okay, so they will, nothing is too much trouble. They never moan about anything. They, uh, is that when the customers call in and they want something, you know, even if, it's, even if their job is not to do that, they go above and beyond and they will do whatever is necessary to get it done. And the upshot of that is that the customers are talking about them. We get work through them recommending us. 
you know, we get more customers because of that. And it doesn't take a lot to make that step from being just average to being amazing and really kind of going beyond the, uh, uh, beyond the call of duty. Um, there's another side to it as well. That's why we're going to get squeezed in, isn't it? <laughs> um, there's another side to it as well, which is getting a job. So we were talking before about looking for jobs and, and things like that. Most people are kind of going for interviews and, 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 and starting to apply for jobs. Think of it this way: if you're, if you're an, even here, if you're, let's say, I'll give you another good example. When I was at university, so I used to, you know, I used to be like I am now, but I was younger and at university. And when a, a local company rang up the university and said, "Look, I'm looking for someone who's pretty good on computers and can come and help us do X, Y, and Z," the lecturer picked me and another guy. Now he had. You know, hundreds of people there he could have picked from, but he picked me and the other guy because you make that extra effort. And so this gets us into the realm which I'll go on to, which is about networking and about using your contacts and using the people that you know to really get you get you some work. So let me this through here. Okay, so I thought this kind of how not to get a job. I presume these four ways are the ways that um, most of you will go and apply for a job. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's pretty bad news down here, I mean this was last year, that for every single job, every time you're going for one of these jobs, there's at least 70 other people going for that, that job. So if I'm, I'm an employer and I get a kind of thump down on the table, I get 70, at least 70, 100 CVs. On average when we put a job out, we get about 100 CVs come through. So first of all, I've got to look, sit down and look through those CVs. Then I've got to ring people and try and get meetings to come and see us. Then I've got to sit through all this thing and then all of this stuff takes time then as an employer I'm even doubly pissed off because I've now got to pay a recruitment agent to do it for <laughs> me and I don't know if, how you, if you have any ideas of how much they charge but let's say, please God, you get walk into a job for £30,000 a year they're going to charge me £6,000 to get get that job that is a lot of money, you know, in anyone's, it doesn't matter how big your business is £6,000 for a £30,000 job is a lot of money and what it might mean is I think, well okay, I'm only going to pay you £24,000 because I can't afford that, that six grand on top So. These are the traditional ways of getting business, uh, uh, of getting jobs, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're the only way. There is another way. Um, okay, so I would do, I personally, I would do none of them, but it's called the hidden job market. Does that mean anything to anyone, or has anyone got any idea what that what that might be? Um, I think it's sort of when you, you know you meet somebody, you interact with them, and you, when you speak to them, you sort of find out if, so for example, I see you mm -hmm. having a conversation, you find out. You know, you run this company, yep. and, you know, get some experience through that way. Yep. I get into the company and then sort of see if I can get a job from there. Absolutely. That's absolutely what it's about. And um, it, what, this 85%, basically 85% of all new jobs happen that way. So we've had, give me a good example actually, the people that work for me, all the best people that work for me have not come through the, the, the traditional way. They've all been from someone who said to me, you know what, Jamie, you're, either I said, oh, I'm looking for someone to do this, that, or the other, and they say, oh, we'll go and speak to so-and-so because I think they're looking for a job. Or um, someone's approached me and said, look, I don't know if you're looking at the moment, but I've got this guy who, who helps me out, or he's a student, you know, my son or whatever, and, and, and it might be worth him having, having a chat with you. And a, a, an example recently was um, my wife works at Bonnet Hospital, and she was chatting to the guy, lovely, lovely guy, who works on, the, on one of the receptions there. Turns out he's into IT. So next thing you know, Last week, he's up at the offices. He's having an interview. We don't, we're not even looking for someone, but you know, now he's in a position. Very, very nice guy. Unfortunately, we're not in a position right this this minute to to, to offer him something. So, friends, family, kind of associates, teachers, colleagues. These are all people that you've got to start talking to, and you've got to impress because they're the people. You know, if you think about, it, I do. So, so my business, I've been going ten years. You know, we've got a pretty good turnover. We employ about eight, nine people. We're we're a pretty successful business. We've never, ever in that 10 years advertised anywhere. We've never done any marketing. We've never put, we've got a website, but that's, that kind of sits there. We've never done any marketing at all. That, that business, or the business that I've built up, has been 100% through networking. So it's through me talking to people, getting introduced to someone else, doing a good job, getting referred. And although that's for business, absolutely the same thing applies to, to getting work. So, um, what I've got here is where would I be focusing my time? Well, if 85% of the market is in, is in uh, the hidden market and the rest of it, you're up against 70 people for every job that you're going for, then I would spend a lot of my time talking to people, introducing yourself. You know, it's all about talking and listening, just, just seeing what's going on, letting people know what you do. 
even on Facebook, you know, updating the status and, and things so that or your 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 credentials so that people know what you're doing. Even put, I'm looking for experience, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so kind of what is networking? I just talked about this briefly. So you've got to let know, people know you're in the market. So you could just be doing your studies and, and just getting on with it. But you could let people know, you know, if anyone needs someone to come and, you know, help out. And, and I think it's important to, to remember that you might be studying networking or programming or whatever. But let's say, let's say we haven't got a need for someone to come and do that at my job. But someone comes and offers to do admin or, or anything. Well, all of a sudden your foot is in the door. And that is what's so important. Get your foot in the door somewhere. Don't be, don't kind of rise, oh, I can't do that, I'm above that, I've got my degree, you know, I'm not going to do that. Go in and do anything, because once you're in somewhere, then all of a sudden opportunities arise. So, so I'd, I'd be very open-minded about what you look for and what kind of things you're going you're gonna to do. Talk to everyone. Um, always think about how you can offer to help people. That's one of the things, when I think about really good people who work for me, they're always saying to me, Jamie, do you need help with this? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? The more you do that, the more you're the person that I'm going to think of when, when I want to either you know, offer you a job or, or something like that. And this is the other thing, kind of warmed up or, or pre-vetted. So in terms of business, you know, if I, if I get referred to someone, you've heard, who's heard of cold calling? Have you heard of cold calling or telemarketing and stuff like that? So that's where, you know, you, you're, you're sitting at home, you just sit down to watch EastEnders and the phone goes, oh, it's our gas electricity, you know, they're trying to send you that kind of thing. That's cold calling. Now, a lot of businesses get their business by cold calling other businesses saying, would you be interested in our services? Um, and it's always hard, you know, for, I think it's for something like for every hundred people that you call, you're likely to get one person who may be interested. When I go and see someone because they've referred me, I know that they're already interested in what I do as a business. And the same thing applies to, to the job market. If someone comes to see me, this guy that, that my wife kind of mentioned, I already know all about him. He already knows about me. And I'm already now thinking about what, how, where he could potentially work for me and how he could work for me. Whereas if he rung me up or sent me a CV or gone through a job agency, it's very likely his job would just his, his CV would have just got thrown off the pile, you know, as, as we just get so many of them. Um, and like I said, some of the best people who work for me have come, come to me that way. Um, are any of you considering kind of apprenticeships or internships or, or anything like that? No? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Internships or apprenticeships yeah. or things like that? Yeah? Would you work for free? Yes. Yeah? yeah? I do. Okay, you do? Good. <laughs> Anyone not work for free? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. This is a serious question. Serious question. There's a lot of stuff in the news you read about this. There's a lot of kind of, oh, don't work free, you know, your value. And I, I totally respect that. But I'll give you, a, I know I keep giving examples, but there was a girl, um, who came to the careers fair. Okay, so here's a good example. Girl came to the careers fair, was it last year? Yeah, it must have been November. last year, November last year. Um, lots of people came up to me, gave me their CVs and things like that, as did she, and in fact she didn't have her CV with it, so I said, look, here's my card, email me your CV. She emails me her CV. Looked good, and we had a nice chat at the, at the careers fair. I said, look, can you come in and do an internship? Okay, and it was, and then, okay, maybe we were wrong or not, but we said it's going to be for an indefinite amount of time because if you're keen to do it, we want to see how keen you are. Okay, so she came and worked for me. Um, initially, we didn't know quite how we wanted her to work or what she wanted. She just seemed like a good, someone who's going to do a good job. She came to us. She worked for us um, for, in the end, I think it was a, a couple of months. We did pay her kind of obviously her travel expenses and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, she, was, she could not do enough to help. She was, she was, I'm very much a big picture starter kind of person. She's a detailed finisher person. We work very, very well together, okay? And she did some really fantastic work. So it came to the end of it, and so she's now telling me she's finished her, her master's, I think she was doing, and she's now looking for work, and, you know, thank you very much. And I said, well, look, I know what you're like now, and I've got some friends who, who, who have business. At the time, we couldn't offer anything, but I said, let me have a chat with a couple of my friends. So first things first, I got her CV to the, um, the head of IT at Tesco.com, okay? A friend of mine, someone that I know, and um, so she, she got the CV in there, and at the time, she didn't go for the interview because of what happened next. I also gave her CV to a friend of mine who runs a consultancy, a small, very, very, very niche consultancy. I've heard of places like Deloitte and all these, these kind of things. So they're not that, but they are very high, and they work in the city, they do, they, the transactions they deal with are hundreds of thousands of pounds, okay, the deals that they do. I rang him up and said, hey Mark, listen, I've got this, uh, this girl who's been working for me. I think you'd get on, I know what you do, and I think it'd be good. She goes over there, I sent a CV, he said, yeah, sure, send her over. Send her over, two days, she's got a job. 
So she's now working. She's based in um, RBS's head office in London. Okay, she's doing a job. That her potential to earn in that job is phenomenal. She's going to earn a fortune. And if she'd not done those little things, rightly or wrongly, whether it was for free or not, she would never have met me. She would never have met that guy. She would, and to get that job with him. And the weird thing was, is he, he wasn't advertising a job. He didn't he didn't know that he was even looking for someone. He just we were we were out the weekend and we were just talking. And he said maybe. So she it goes to show. Not what you know, it's who you know. And, uh, and I think I can't stress how important that is. Um, okay, so that's kind of about how how to get a job um, and, and the hidden job market. But what I, what I also wanted to talk about really was just kind of what makes an amazing employee. Um, has anyone kind of, got, I know we've just briefly talked about it, has anyone got some kind of ideas about what that might be? What can you do? You know, you get to work, you sit down, you do your work, you go home, and that's it. You get paid your money. Is there any stuff you can you can think of that you could do that can make you stand out from from the average employee? Enjoying your job, enjoying what you're doing. Because when you're enjoying what you're doing, you're just gonna do that extra bit anyway. So it's just gonna be second nature. So you've already differ differentiated you from the person next to you, yeah. just automatically. No, absolutely. You you hit the nail on the head. A lot of people. Why, why do you work? Why, what, what, in fact, let's go step back. Why, do, why are you here? Hmm? So to get a job? Yeah. Why do you want a job? Own <coughs> money. Uh, money? Yeah. money? Okay. To be fulfilled. Sorry? To be fulfilled. To, to be fulfilled? Okay, no, that's... that's to that's prove yourself like you can do something. Okay, okay. See, I think that that stuff is the stuff you've got to ask yourself because it's, it's relatively easy to go and get a qualification, go and get a job, and just go to work to make money. But what I think is important is that the people that work for me and the people that I want to work for me, they're not just there for that. I think when you look at some of these studies about um, you know, what fulfills people and you know, is it money, money actually comes down quite low on the list. You've got to, you've got to be doing something that you love to do because you're going to be doing that 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock you know, for the rest of your life. So it's very important that you that you find something that you love doing, and that you're happy to do. Um, now this is the other thing in terms of kind of getting getting promoted and stuff like that. Again, if you've got a team of people and um, you know you, you've got a whole bunch of people and they're all the, all the same, it's it's how do you differentiate yourself from those other people that are in your group? If there's there's ten people and you're all doing the same job, if you're not making yourself stand out and making yourself look different and getting in front of the, the right people, it's going to be much, much harder to, uh, to get promoted. Um, that, was, that was kind of it. That was kind of it. And actually what I wanted to do with the last bit was really kind of just kind of get feedback and, and to, always what's quite fun is to get examples of, of very, very bad customer service because that's what it comes down to is customer service. Whether your customer is your boss or whether your customer is the customer. It's, it's about customer service. And maybe you have a few examples of, of some really, really bad situations or, or stuff where you've been really impressed by something. I don't know, has anyone got some examples of something recently where they've been to a shop or a restaurant and someone's done a really bad... Go on, do you want to... I went to Asda to shop. And then That's they where you went have, wrong. They have, <laughs> they have this new um, point of sales okay. where you put the product and then it scrolls on a... And then you're supposed to look at it yourself. Okay. Then um, what I had, I didn't want to go to those point of sales. I wanted someone to like help me out because I wanted to know the, the price back things have. Okay. So when I, I was there, he tells the the manager, the one who's standing on them, tell her I can't serve her. Okay. And to go to the point of sale, and I'm like, excuse me, why don't you tell me that yourself? Because yeah, yeah. I'm here and I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. Then he's like. Now he, he continues talking, he ignores me completely, talks mm -hmm. to the manager, and I'm like, Dah, I'm standing here, you should have told me that. So I got out, went to another lady, and then she served me and I went away. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that person is going to get promoted? No. Well, it depends <laughs> with the relationship the person has with the, with the supervisor. Because well, after the end of the day, I didn't feel any question yet. No. I didn't send a complaint. So the only person who knows is the person, uh, the manager who was behind there, and okay. they were talking together. So obviously, but the other people usually yeah. that know are you, the customer, and it's usually I don't know if everyone finds this, but if you've had a really shit piece of service somewhere, 
I mean, I, I love complaining, but you will go and tell your friends, you might be out for dinner and you're telling someone, you're saying, oh, I can't believe I've done it as do, and they, they stuffed it up. I'll give you a little story about um, someone, someone I was talking to recently. He went to, um, you know, Wagamama, yeah. the, the restaurant, the Chinese, Chinese kind of restaurant. So he went to Wagamama in Harvey Nicks in London. So the guy's quite an affluent guy, you know, he likes his designer gear and all this kind of stuff. And um, he's sitting there with his family on Boxing Day eating a, a, a meal at Wagamama. And he feels this cold, wet sensation down his back. And it was one of the waitresses who spilled fruit juice down his cashmere jumper. Okay. And it's all designer, designer stuff. Mm. So he gets up and he starts speaking to the, you know, he's having a go at her. And she said, well, you know, the meal's on the house and I'll get your, your jumper dry cleaned now. And he said, well, it's Boxing Day, nowhere's open. You know, so he's kicking off about the whole thing. And in the end, she wasn't very, she wasn't very forthcoming. She wasn't very helpful and all that. So he comes out of the restaurant. And he goes to the main bit of Harvey Nicks in, in London. He goes to their main reception area. And he says, look, I know it's not your, um, it's not your problem because they're a concession. He says, but you can see what they've done to my jumper. And it's, it's an expensive jumper. It would be nice if something could be done about it. So they said, certainly, sir, come downstairs to the men's department. Take a walk downstairs to the men's department. They said, you can pick a jumper to replace this one, any one you want, from the international designers to, to the you know, local designers, anything. So he picks out a 500-pound cashmere jumper. Okay, and they said that's fine. We're very, very sorry what happened. You know, we hope hopefully it will never happen again, and we'll have a word with it. Um, he then rang Wagamama afterwards and complained again, and he got some. I think it was a hundred pound vouchers to go back to Wagamama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the moral of this story? The moral of this story is, first of all, Wagamama. That's cost them. So because they're a concession, because they're within Harvey Nicks, Wagamama have got a bill now for five hundred pounds for a cashmere jumper. They've also lost the whatever it was, sixty quid on the meal where he ate. And also, they've had to give them a £100 voucher. So it's cost them about £660 because one person <laughs> wasn't very forthcoming the way that they dealt with them. And I'm in an office where there's lots of other businesses there. And you spent the whole day going around telling everyone how sh crap Wagamum were and how fantastic Harvey Nicks are. Okay? <laughs> and it goes to show you just how the way that you interact with people and that split-second thing, you know, the, the way that you talk to people and the way that you, you, you work with them makes such a difference. So to kind of bring it back to, to what makes you amazing and why I think amazing is so important is because, as I said at the beginning, 99% of the population are not amazing. I hate to say, when you go out to work, and you, a lot of people, they just get on, they do the daily grind, they don't do anything spectacular or anything, anything amazing. And what I think is important is if you go that extra mile, if you're always thinking, how would I feel if, I, if, if this person treated me in this way, then you'll be remembered. And when you're remembered, you're likely to get promoted, you're likely to get offered jobs because you, the word has got round that you're a very good employee. When you're looking for jobs, even just in your day-to-day -day kind of dealings with people, you're more likely to get kind of referred on to people. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to say. So uh, I hope people found it useful. Yeah, it is. Any questions at all? No? Mm -hmm. Is anyone interested to know how James set up his company? I said at the beginning, but I don't know if yeah. the, the ones that the, who came at the end. Any other questions? Perhaps? What would you say the big stepping stone is from you, you know, starting your own business? <coughs> what what like the big like the big thing that happened for you to start your own business? Like, was there any key thing that happened? It was a key thing. I was brought up. My mum always used to say to me, my dad always used to say to me, he used to say, Jamie, Clara, Jamie, he used to call me Jamie, he used to say, Jamie, you will never be a millionaire working for someone else. Now, rightly or wrongly, <laughs> I'm still not a millionaire and I'm not working for anyone else, but... Um, different things motivate different people. Um, I don't like being told what to do. Um, I have lots of ideas the whole time that I want to kind of do. Um, I love people and I, ultimately I like selling, so I like going out there. And the thought for me of spending the rest of my life in a situation where someone else was telling me what to do. I mean, I did, obviously I've been employed in the past. I, I used to work at Tesco.com, hence how I know someone very high up at Tesco. Um, and I used to find it so frustrating because I would, I would have ideas about stuff they could do. This was just when Tesco.com was starting and the whole website and the whole dot-com boom thing was happening. And I had all these ideas and I was like this little tiny dot in a massive organisation. And, and that, that I found frustrating. If I'd done things differently, maybe I would have started the business myself. Maybe I would have gone and worked for a smaller business because that way you can have some of that without having to have the risk. Um, just as a show of hands, I know you said you were quite interested in doing something, and I think you said maybe do something. Is anyone else interested in doing their own thing, starting their own business, or are you all quite keen to, to, to you interested? Yes. 
Yeah, what kind of thing would you like to do? I'd like to have a, on a small scale basis, but a networking company. Okay, so similar kind of, similar kind of things, what, uh, that's what we do, we do, we do networking servers and that kind of thing. And um, it's, it's a big step, you have to be the, 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 the right kind of mindset. I think when I've done talks here before, I've said, you, in, in, statistically, I think only about 5% of people will start their own business. And there is a pretty horrifying fact. So I think it's 95% of businesses fail in the first year. Another 95% of them fail in the ne next five years. And then another 95% fail in the next 10 years. So the fact that I'm here for 10 years means either I'm going to fail next week or I'm going to, <laughs> we're going to carry on. So, um, you know, it's, you've got to be the right kind of person. You've got to be pretty resilient. And you've got to like risk as well. You, know, you, can't, you can't. If you want comfort and you want stability and you, and you want that kind of thing, I would suggest get a job. It's probably good. Way to go. <laughs> Those of you who missed the earlier part, Jane was talking about um, how to do well in a role and how to really work on your personal skills, your communication skills. So I don't know whether you'll just add a little bit more about that. About, you know, we all know your, your technical minds if you've got very strong theory from your studies, but it's often the um, people skills that will get you through the interview be remembered and uh, where employers might think, oh, this candidate is actually better because I've got a rapport with that person, they can talk with me, they can meet random people, be comfortable when we meet clients. So that's really important, well, isn't the, it? The, 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 the key word yeah. you said there is rapport. Mm. So I don't know if anyone's here done as a part-time job, any kind of selling or anything like that, but the, the key to selling, the absolute secret is rapport. So I presume everyone knows what rapport means. It's, it's, a, it's me being able to sit down in a room with you, for example, and as quickly as possible, make you feel like you like me and, and, and all those kind of things. So there are some tricks that you can do in terms of rapport. So if you think you're going into an interview, I used to, my, my wife used to laugh because I used, when I did go for jobs, I used to love it. I used to quite enjoy the relish the, the idea of, of doing job interviews. And a lot of people I know quite get quite scared of them or they're, they're a bit worried about doing them. And the key thing to remember is you, you want that other person to like you because essentially you might have all the qualifications in the world, but if I don't like you, I'm probably not going to give you the job. It's not only am I going to have to work with you every day, but you, the people, I'm going to put you in front of my customers, all this kind of stuff, just like uh, you said. So there are a few little tricks that you can do. These are kind of sales tricks, but they work in exactly the same way of rapport. So has anyone done, ever done anything with body language? Or uh, know anything about body language or NLP and, and stuff like this? Some of my sessions, you would have had a bit of that. Okay, so one of the things, that this is quite fun. You'll find, this is quite fun. You can do this just for fun. Um, and then you can actually start playing some games with it. So one of the things you can do is that human beings like people and things that are similar to them, okay? So uh, one way that I can quickly build a rapport with you, for example, is by making myself similar to you. Now, obviously, there's some stock differences between the two of us. <laughs> one of us is good-looking. <laughs> but one of the things you can do, and it's a really straightforward thing, you can do this when you go home tonight, is you start sitting like the other person. Okay. So if we came in and I'm sitting like this and then you lean forward and I lean forward, you, it's, called, it's called mirroring. Okay. And so you start to do it. You don't do it like, you don't, I don't sit there trying to do exactly the way that you're sitting, <laughs> but you do it in a very kind of laid back way. And immediately you put yourself in a situation where you, it's, it's quite weird. It's like all the Darren Brown stuff. You think, I, I like this guy, but I don't know why I like, like this, yeah. this guy. And um, so you can start doing that. And what happens is you just start to follow him. So you do, you, you do that. But then what you do and then this is a part of a, a kind of sales trick, if you want, and, and again, it's a bit like to do with interviewing, is you start to take the lead. So what happens, you play a game. So you're following what the other person's doing, then I'll start leaning forward. And because you, you know you, you've done the job, because then they start leaning forward, and then you lean back, and they lean back, and you scratch your head, and they scratch your head, <laughs> and all this kind of thing. So you can play some really good games with, with mirroring, and it's, a, and it's a really good way to, to, to get yourself relaxed, and you can have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, that's something I like to do. The other thing is, you know, I tend to, uh, depends on what the situation is, but how you sit is very important. So if you sit kind of like, all closed up, it's all quite obvious. <laughs> you're kind of closed up. You're like, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Then that's not really going to, you're not going to exude confidence and you're not going to exude someone that, 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 that they necessarily want to, um, that you want to employ. But sometimes you can just trick people. So you can do, th you know, you can sit back, be a little bit more open. You might feel a bit uncomfortable, but it will give off an impression of, of, of someone who's who feels kind of confident in themselves. Um, other things I'd say is obviously going for jobs. Things are a little bit more casual nowadays. It's not all suits and all the rest of it. But um, wear something you're comfortable with. If you go somewhere and you wear something uncomfortable, you'll feel uncomfortable, and that will come across very much in the interview. Um, I think lastly, one of the key things of sales is that I heard once, which I thought was a great phrase, which is you've got two ears 
and you've got one mouth, and you should use them in that order, you know, that kind of ratio. So spend most of your, I know I'm doing all the talking today, but when I go, when I go on a, a sales pitch and I go and talk to someone, I spend probably 90% of the time listening to them and, and listening to them and understanding them. And the more you listen to them, everyone loves talking about themselves. Okay, we all love it. You know, the minute someone opens up and says, tell me about your problems, ugh, it all starts coming <laughs> out and, you know, you love it. That, everyone loves yeah. that. And, and it, the same can even work in an interview. You know, you can go into an interview and you immediately strike up a rapport with the person and then you get onto the subject, they might ask you what your hobbies are and you might say, oh, I don't know, playing a guitar. Oh, I play the guitar. And then the next thing you know, you have a, it's more like a friendly conversation. And as I said, you're far more likely to, to want to do work with someone who, who's, who's like that. And it can work like that. So rapport is absolutely. Uh, Do you find when things. you interview candidates, mm. the vibe you get, and the way they come across, is really important. I don't know. Facial uh, expression. A a absolutely, it really is. I mean, when I think, <laughs> I had one guy came in for an interview, and he sat there and he, he had these bags under his eyes, like you wouldn't believe, you know, and he, he just looked knackered, and it, it, he was telling me this whole horror story about how it taken him two hours to get there and all this kind of stuff. Then he's telling me that he's depressed and he's, you know, <laughs> and all this kind of stuff, and his life is divorced and his kids are <laughs> Now, that's not really a great place. I mean, he might be the best technician in the world, but there's no way I want to work with him every day. So, um, yeah, the way that you kind of hold yourself and the way that you, you're with people is it's extremely important. Extremely important. Um, so, whilst it's a good idea to get friendly with people, only tell them the good stuff. They don't want to hear, most people don't want to hear the bad stuff. If someone asks you how you are, don't start telling them all the, the negative. They're not really that interested. They just want to, you know, uh, know about what's, what's good. Has anyone been to interviews? Has anyone uh, kind of experienced it? And, and any, 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 any war stories? How did they go? Did you say you... Yeah, it was good. Yeah? Yeah. Did you get the job? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah? I do. Okay. I'm working in holiday. Okay. Good as a reception, I'm working down there. The interview was all right, but I was too much like, okay, I was like feeling like, um, when he was asking me a question, I was like, okay, what to answer? I was like, thank you, like, for two minutes, and I'm like, giving you a smile. It's like, okay, this is good if you're giving a smile, but still you're thinking yeah. at the same time. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I said it was good. I got your first time, so. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, does anyone, do, do people have part-time jobs or? Most people have got a part-time job, and no one got a part-time job. Or, yeah, I think that's really good. I think it's even if it's nothing to do with what you're doing here. A, you need money, but B, it's all great experience, and it's you know it's it's all about kind of understanding people, jobs, work, um, sales, customer service. All this that's all about human interaction, and the more you understand how humans interact, and the more the more you'll, you'll, uh, you'll do well. I think that's that. Unless there's any other kind of questions. Do you want to tell them where your website can be found? Yeah, of course. If they want to do a little bit of reading. There we go. So you can go and have a look at our website. It's amazingsupport.co.uk. Um, feel free, if you want to um, ask me any questions, maybe it's particularly people who are looking to start their own things, I'm always happy to give advice or mentor people and, and help them along with that. Um, or if you want some advice generally in kind of the industry. We're, we're obviously one very small part of the industry. We are a small business within a massive industry. But... I, I know what's going on and I can see what's happening, so I can always always happy to give advice and, and uh, you know help people if they want to chat. No Thank you at all. very much. I've got a list going now of like your details. I've sent some information to you later to today as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for Thank you, coming in. And sorry about all the disruptions, but you. you know a lot of people coming. From That's all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Give us a round of applause for our uh, famous panel. Thank you. Excellent. I'll be hanging around.